in the uh, in the previous video, I, I gave you a sphere, and um, and we we worked out that the uh, the surface area of a sphere is proportional to to this thing here. Now it's hard to understand what what it means to have a power of a fraction. So as far as we're concerned, it, it doesn't matter. Just know that the volume is to the power of a number, whatever that number is. Okay. So so by having this statement here. We um we we work we looked at what happened when we have a sphere of volume v and another sphere of twice the volume, and then and then we looked at the uh well we worked at that if you have the surface area of this and the surface area of this if you get the surface area of the small uh of the small sphere, you, and then it turns out that if you times it by two to the power of two over three it would give you the the surface area of the big sphere. Okay, um, and and just to give you a, re a relationship um, between surface area and volume here, if you plot if you plot a graph of y equals um, x to the power of two over three, that will give you a rough idea of the relationship between surface area and, and the volume of, of the sphere. So, for example, if you if you plot this here, okay, now our, our, this is a, this is similar to our x. So this is x here. So in this case, it represents volume. And uh, y here, well, this is our y here. So this here is the surface area of a sphere. Now, as you increase the volume, the, uh, the surface area increases by, in this manner, in this, in this manner here. Um, and we don't care about the negative side, because uh, to, have a, to have a negative volume is, is meaningless in our situation. OK? Well, anyway, this. If you were, if you ever get given something like this, if you plot a line of y equals v to the power of whatever this thing is, um, it, it gives you a rough indication of the relationship between between in this case between volume and uh, and surface area. So as the volume as you increase the volume here, um, the the surface area increased by by this well in this manner. Okay, now. Well, in in um, in this video here, we we're going to look at well in, in the previous video we looked at what happened when you double the volume, and we we uh, we said that if you if you double the volume, then the surface area will will increase by two to the power of uh, three, up uh, two to the power of two over three. Now in this video we're going to to um, to test if this is truly the case. Okay. So let's start by um, hang on. Let's start by by looking at a sphere. Hang on. Uh, let's start by looking at a sphere. So here um, we 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 want to test to see if it's truly um, if, if if you have a surface area here and a surface area here. Remember this 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 is twice the volume of this. If it's truly uh, time, if the surface area gets if the surface area truly gets multiplied by uh, 2 to the power of 3. That's what we're going to test out in this video. So let's start by what, well, let's, let's assign a volume to this small sphere. We could use 7, and then this must be 14, the volume here. But, um, but, uh, for some reason I chose 10. Maybe because it's nice and easy. So if, if the small sphere has a volume of 10, then the big sphere will have a volume of 20. Okay? So basically, uh, you, so, so here we've got a volume of 10. And a volume of 20. So now we want to work out the surface area of the small sphere, and then the surface area of the big sphere, and then and then later on we can get the the surface area of the big sphere divided by the volume uh, by by the surface area of the small sphere, and then that will give us the multiplier to take us from the small one. Well, you, you see what I mean later on. Okay. So um, in in order for so we've got a volume here 10. 20. In order for us to work out the surface area, we have to jump to the radius, and then from the radius we can jump to. Because um, if you look at this here, we we've been given uh, well, we, we're given the the volume here, and we want to work out the surface area. So we've got to work out the the uh, the radius first, and and then when when we when we worked out the radius, we can put it into here to work out the surface area. Okay, so. Start by by having this here. This has a volume of 10, 20. So uh, start with our formula here. We want to work out the radius. Jump to the radius, and then we can jump to the surface area. So so put 10 into this v here, so it becomes this. 
and then over on this side here, put 20 into the V here, so it becomes this. Okay, so the, so the left hand side represents our small sphere, the right hand side represents our, our big sphere. Okay, so hang on. So, um, yeah, so just follow it through here times both sides by 3. We are just trying to work out the radius, and the same here times this side by 3 for the big one, and then blah blah blah, uh, and then the radius, the radius of this small sphere is given by this, the radius of the big sphere is given by this. And you, then you would jump to your calculator. The radius of this is this. The radius of the big one is this, giving you a surface area. Hang on. So here, the formula for the surface area is this. So you would put this thing into the R here. For the big sphere, put this into this R here. So basically, um, basically here, this 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 is your number here. Okay. And this here is your number here. And then, well, anyway, work out the surface area. So the surface area of the big sphere is given by this. The surface area of the small sphere is given by this here. Now, now, uh, hang on. So here, the uh, you, you've got a small sphere here. You've got a big sphere here. The surface area, of sm the surface area of the small sphere is given by by this here. The surface area of the big sphere is given by this here. Now. If if you want to find out the multiplier here, you would get the destination of the well. You would get the destination divided by the original. You see, this is our this is the um, the surface area of the big sphere. So this is in a way our destination. So so to work out the multiplier, you would get the the destination divided by the um, the the original. So so that would give you the um, the uh, the multiplier that would take you from the small from, from your start, and then you times this multiplier here, and then that will give you the destination. So you would you would do this here. Don't forget, this is the surface area of our our big sphere. That's like the destination here, and then you would divide it by the uh, the surface area of the small sphere. So this is our original. So basically, to get the multiplier here, you would get the destination divided by the original. Destination here divided by original here. So this is our multiplier, okay? So the multiplier is 1.58. So just a quick reminder from the previous video, we started out with this, okay? And and then the surface area of our, our old sphere is this. This is our old sphere, and our, our new sphere is this. Our, our new sphere has the um, a uh, a volume of 2v. Now this this is just a reminder from the previous video. And then, and then we blah 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 blah, and then it turns out that um, the the multiplier that would take us from the old sphere to the new sphere is given by this thing here. Okay. Now it turns out that if if you if you punch this into your calculator, it gives you this. Now when when we did our experiment by putting by putting um, by putting ten into the small sphere and twenty into the big sphere, it gave us a multiplier of this one point five. Eight, and this thing down here is uh, is one point. You see, our 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 um our experiment, our, our our imaginary experiment gave us this answer here. Now the true answer is this seven here. So really, by right, when you see, if if you were to round this up, if you were to round this up, it would be five point nine. But in our experiment, we got five point eight. Now the reason for that is because we we did a lot of rounding off. So for example, um, when 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 I um, when I cube root this thing here, I rounded it off. You see, I rounded off around. Um, well, when I did this thing here, uh, and then I wrote this thing down here, I actually rounded this off. So I, I incurred some errors. Some errors. So it's, my point is that our our experiment, our imaginary experiment, is still good enough because. 5.58 and the real true value is 5.587 blah 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 but it's, it's still good enough okay